Have you ever been excited to play your favourite game, only to have to wait through loading screen after loading screen? I've spent the past 6 years creating a game engine, and I'll show you how to remove all loading screens from your games. We can do this today because computers are pretty advanced. Years ago, computers could only do one thing at a time, so each feature a game had, like these three, had to be done one after another. And that's why loading screens exist. When you enter a new level, the game has to stop what it's doing and load it. This can take a while, so the game shows you a loading screen while you wait. But computers have multiple threads now, which means they can run different things at the same time. This means you can continue playing on the main thread, while the next level loads on background threads. But it's very likely this will crash your game. Because if two threads read the same piece of memory, they might get completely different values. This happens when a thread accesses the same piece of memory over and over again, because that data gets stored in the cache as well. It's much faster to read from the cache than from RAM, so it's a huge optimization boost. But if the main thread writes a new value to RAM, the other thread will be working with outdated data. And the rules that control when data is copied from RAM to the cache are so obscure that you can't predict it. This is the problem of cache coherency, and there are two ways we can solve it. Let's say we have a list of 5000 particles that we update on a background thread. Because the background thread is using this particle data often, its location gets stored in its cache. But the main thread might want to spawn more particles, so it allocates a new, larger array. The old memory is freed and used by something else, but the background thread doesn't know this yet. It'll keep writing particle data to the same memory, and this will definitely cause a crash. To fix this, we need to make sure two threads never use the same memory at the same time. We'll use the example of a background thread loading a texture. The thread loads the texture from disk and stores it in RAM. Then after it's done, it sets this boolean to true. The main thread then notices this boolean is true, and starts sending the texture to the graphics card. But when it's rendered, half of it's missing. This happens because memory isn't guaranteed to sync between the cache and RAM in order. Even though the background thread sets the boolean after loading the texture, the boolean might be sent from the cache to RAM first. The main thread then starts sending the texture to the graphics card before it's ready, and that's why it looks corrupted. So this boolean is not a great solution. We need a robust way to know when everything from a thread's cache has been sent to RAM. For this we'll use a memory fence. This fence lets us know when all previous memory writes have been sent to RAM, and every thread can see the data we just wrote. When the texture data is fully written to RAM, the fence will signal true, and the main thread can send the texture to the graphics card. This sounds like a lot of work, but c -sharp manages fences for us with its task feature. Tasks run on background threads, and they automatically create a fence when they finish running. The main thread then checks the isCompleted boolean, which returns true when the thread finishes running, and its fence is signaled. Let's move away from this code and look at a real demo. I've created this forest scene that has terrain, textures, and models. When the game starts up, none of this is loaded, so we'll show a main menu screen instead. When the player clicks play, we'll use tasks to load each of these from disk. Each frame the main thread checks these tasks, and sends their data to the graphics card when they're done. You can run this demo yourself, details are in the video description. But the game will stutter whenever it sends data to the graphics card, and this video on screen shows you how to stop that from happening. 